Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. I'm here with my visual observer Scarlett and we're going to talk about the new features in Drone Pilot Canada Release 1.5. Scarlett, come here. Scarlett, come here. Come here. Come here. We've added seven, yes, seven new capabilities in version 1.5 of Drone Pilot Canada. A weather radar overlay, national parks, a distance to aerodromes feature, a cool win-win find a flight reviewer button, the ability to edit flight log records and a few other flight log enhancements, an emergency button to guide you through flyaways, and last but not least, three new pre-canned procedures plus a user-definable procedure. Before we walk through these, I want to thank all the droners who have purchased the app and especially those who have provided feedback and feature ideas by emailing me at dondroneson at gmail.com. Keep those ideas coming and if you haven't already done so, please leave a review and five stars on the App Store or Play Store. Okay, let's check out the latest features. The first new feature is a simple but very helpful one. We've added a button on the main map to overlay an animated weather radar display. When tapped, the screen will zoom out a bit and you'll see a 10 minute interval precipitation view over the past hour, with the time of each snapshot showing beside the button. You probably already have your favorite weather app, but the fact that this is integrated into Drone Pilot Canada gives you a handy way to see what might be sneaking up behind you. Just press radar off to turn it off again. While we're zoomed out, I'll mention the second cool feature in version 1.5. National parks are now showing on the map. Here's one over here. Clicking inside it will identify the park and give a brief summary of the drone policy for all national parks. That is, recreational droning is prohibited and commercial drone flying requires a special park permit. By the way, there's lots of other kinds of parks in Canada, including provincial parks, conservation areas, and municipal parks. We don't show all of these and each will have a different drone policy, so please check with the local rules before flying in such areas. Speaking of flight planning, under the dot menu, you'll find a great new feature we call distance to aerodromes. Selecting this item will display a list of all aerodromes within 20 nautical miles of the last place you clicked on the map. The aerodromes are sorted by proximity with their basic identification and operator contact information as usual, plus the distance in nautical miles and kilometers and the direction in both degrees and the simpler cardinal direction like northwest. Clicking on them takes you to Sky Vector for more details. When planning a flight, this is crucial information to have on hand. And you can export it to an email by clicking the export button right here. You'll see we also use this list of aerodromes as part of the emergency button feature, which I'll demonstrate in a few minutes. Why did we pick 20 nautical miles for the selection of aerodromes? Well, this represents a reasonable risk radius in the event of a flyaway. A typical drone has a battery capacity of about a half an hour and at top speed could fly over 35 kilometers or 20 nautical miles if its control software was out of commission. It's pretty incredible how far these drones can travel. Now here's a cool feature that is a win-win for users of Drone Pilot Canada and flight reviewers. On the hamburger menu, we've added a flight reviewer button. And what that does is it brings up a list of flight reviewers sorted by province west to east with active buttons to email, phone, or access their website. And to show up on this list, the flight reviewers must offer at least a 5% discount to clients who mention they saw their listing on the Drone Pilot Canada app. Talk about a win-win. Okay, this next feature is a doozy. Many people have asked for it and here it is, the ability to edit flight records. Now there's lots of reasons you might want to do this. To add missing information to flight notes, for example, to correct a flight time, and sometimes to correct a location, just to name a few examples. 
So all you do is from the main map screen, you go to the hamburger menu and select flight logs. And before I go any further, I just want to point out a few things right here. We've changed the format of the flight log list to be more readable. So you can see the date and the duration, and you can also see a flight title. So we've added the ability to create flight titles when you create a, a flight in addition to flight notes. And it's the flight title that shows up on this flight log list. And that'll help you a lot to find a flight that you've taken in the past without trying to remember what the date was. I think that's pretty cool. You can also select one or more flights by ticking the little box here on the right. Then on the dot menu, you can export just those flights. For example, if you're a pilot for a drone company, after each set of flights for a particular assignment, you can send the flight records off to your boss just for that one assignment. So that's, that's quite a convenience and that's something that someone asked for. So there you go. Anyway, back to editing. So let's select a flight record. I'll just pick this one. And you'll see that there is now an edit button on the top right of the, of the screen. Clicking that allows you to edit any of the attributes of the flight. Well, almost any. If you want to change the location, you can specify a street address, but you can't specify a latitude and longitude by uh, numerical coordinates. And for technical reasons, you can't edit the weather. So sorry about that. But you can always put things like that, whether weather was beautiful and sunny, but windy or something like that in the flight notes if you, if you desire. Otherwise, you're good to go. You can change the aircraft and the pilot and start start time and the duration and thing, things like that. So it's, it's very easy to do. Simply hit save up here again in the top right when you're done. This next feature is both cool and actually very, very important from an aviation safety perspective. We've added an emergency button to the flight timer screen. You can see it here. The intent is to provide you simple guidance in the event of a flyaway situation. Sort of like a panic button, but without the annoying noise. You can select either horizontal flyaway or vertical flyaway, depending upon whether your drone is leaving town laterally or basically straight up. The horizontal flyaway option provides the list of nearby aerodromes in order of proximity and shows their direction. You can skip the aerodromes that, you're not, that are not in the direction your drone is escaping and just select the ones you think might be at risk. When you tap on an aerodrome, you are offered buttons to immediately call any phone numbers that we've parsed out of the CFS operator data, and we provide a recommended script to ensure you tell the person on the other end of, of the phone all the information they will need to know. The script even turns the heading around for you. So for example, if the airport you're calling is 10 nautical miles north of you, the script says, more or less, I am 10 nautical miles south of your airport. In a vertical flyaway situation, your drone could easily exceed the maximum allowed altitude, possibly entering upper controlled airspace and putting manned aircraft at risk. We're currently working directly with Nav Canada to determine the optimum way to communicate with air traffic control. In this release, we advise you to review the list of nearby airports to identify and call the control tower controlling your location. If appropriate, they will be able to direct the call to other controllers. Otherwise, if you believe there is an imminent and immediate threat to aviation and public safety, we provide you with a button for the General Aviation Emergency Number. And in both cases, we provide a script to walk you through the information you'll need to provide. Obviously, placing any of these phone calls is like calling 911. Only do it in an actual, real emergency. To tie in with the panic button feature, we've added three more procedures to the checklists and procedures list. We have a horizontal flyaway procedure, a vertical flyaway procedure, an important phone numbers list, and for those who like to create, a user-definable procedure that really is just a blank sheet. 
And of course, all of these are tailorable to your particular needs by selecting and editing them. In the edit environment, you can add items, delete items, or change items as you see fit. There you go. Great new features in Drone Pilot Canada version 1.5 to help you fly safely and easily. Thanks for watching.